Welcome to this lecture series of embedded system code KOE062. Myself assistant professor Tukur Gupta from Ajay Kumar Garg Engineering College, Ghazabad. The subject I am going to cover is embedded systems which is being taught in 6th semester as an open elective. The, this is the first lecture of this series and in this lecture I will introduce you all to embedded system. This is the syllabus for this subject. In the first unit we are going to cover the basics of embedded system, the build process for embedded system, structural units, some concepts like DMA, memory management methods, timer and counting devices, watchdog timers, clock, real time clock, in, in circuit emulators, target hardware debugging. In the second unit, we will cover all the embedded networking concepts, all the serial communication protocols. In the third unit, we will cover embedded firmware development environment which includes the EDLC concepts. The fourth unit will talk about RTOS that is real time operating system which is the heart of any embedded system. In the fifth unit we will cover embedded system application development issues and challenges and we will talk about some case studies like smart card system, washing machine etcetera which is the very common examples of embedded system designing. So, let us talk about this lecture, the textbooks we will refer are as mentioned here and these have been su suggested by the university only. So, the very first topic which we are going to study is what is system? A system is a way of working, organizing or doing one or many tasks according to a fixed plan, a set of rules or we can say a set of programs or we can say a system is also an arrangement in which all the units assemble and work together according to the plan or program. This is very important according to plan or program or we can say according to the set of rules. So, we can say all its sub components depend on each other. For example, let us have an example of watch. So, as we all know it is a time display system and the various parts in a clock in a watch are hardware, needles, battery, dial, chassis that is the outer, outer framework and strap. The various rules are as follows like all needles should move in clockwise direction, a thin needle rotates every second, a long needle rotates every minute a short needle rotates every hour, all needles return to the original position after 12 hours. So, these are certain rules according to which a clock works. Similarly, we have an exam another example of washing machine, it is an automatic clothes washing system. The various parts in a washing machine are status display panel switches, dials, motor, power supply, control unit, inner water level sensor and solenoid valve. What are the rules according to which the washing machine works are wash by spinning, rinse, drying, wash over by blinking, each step display the process stage and lastly in case of interruption execute only the remaining processes. So, in this way a washing machine works. So, these are the set of the rules according to which any washing machine will work. So, we come to a conclusion that washing machine is a system. Now, what is an embedded system? As the term is defining what is embedded? Embedded means that something is attached to another thing. So, embedded means that something that is attached to another thing 
or can be thought of as a computer hardware system having software embedded in it. An embedded system can be independent system or it can be a part of large system. So, it is a microcontroller or microprocessor based system okay, which is designed to perform a specific task. So, when we talk about an embedded system, we basically talks about a specific task. So, its set of rules, its set of, uh, its a way of working is very much defined to carry, uh, carry out the particular task. So, it can be a microcontroller based also and it can be microprocessor based also. So, technically how can we define any embedded system? So, it is a combination of computer hardware and software and perhaps the additional mechanical or any other parts designed to perform a dedicated function. So, its purpose is very much defined. What are the various components of embedded system? First of all hardware, among the hardware being the, the various components included are processor, timers, interrupt controller, input output devices memories, ports etcetera. And another co very important component is the application, application software which includes the various uh, series of programs which, which are defined to perform the particular tasks. Lastly, real time operating system that is the RTOS and what is RTOS? It is a software component that rapidly switches between the various tasks and it gives an impression as if all the tasks are being performed simultaneously. So, this is very important for any embedded system because the embedded in the any of the embedded system application the response is very much important that in what timings a response is being done. So, the real time operating system is the core of any embedded application. The various components of an embedded system are shown in this block diagram. These are the memory units, read only memory that is ROM, random access memory that is RAM, input devices, output devices. Now, application specific circuitry and communication interfaces. So, application specific circuitry works accordingly what application the embedded system is being used. And communication interfaces are very important to communicate between the various devices being used in, the, in any embedded system application. So, what is the central processing unit? this is the heart of any embedded system application. It can be a microprocessor based or it can be microcontroller based. So, this diagram shows a typical embedded system in which there is sensor, there is A to D converter, processor or it can be application specific integrated circuit processor, D to A converter actuator and this is the memory. So, this is the real picture, the sensors means there may can be LEDs or any sensing devices, control unit consists of any microcontroller or microprocessor, actuator consists of any mechanical devices like motors, stepper motors etcetera. So, what these parts are actually, let us see. So, first of all there is sensor, it measures the physical quantity and converts it into electrical signal which can be read by an observer or by any electronic instrument like A to D converter. So, what is a sensor? It stores the measured quantity to the memory. So, sensor is something which senses the physical quantities and converts them into the uh, electrical signals like there is a thermometer, it senses the temperature and converts that physical quantity, temperature is a physical quantity, it converts that physical quantity into electrical signals 
which gets displayed either as analog value or as a digital value. A 2 D converter does what? It converts the analog values into digital values that is the digital signals. What is the role of processor and ASIC? That is application specific ICs. Processors process the data to measure the output and store it into the memory. So, process without processor the data cannot be processed. So, this is the heart of any embedded system application. What is D 2 A converter? So, whatever the physical quantities have been converted into the electrical signals and, and especially in the form of digital pulses, those electrical signals are being converted back into analog form using D 2 A converter. So, it converts the digital data fed by the processor to the analog data. Now, finally, what is the role of actuator? It compares the output given convert uh, output given to the by the D 2 A converter to the actual output stored in it and stores the approved output. So, this is how the, act, the actuator output is used to run any mechanical device like the actual output is sent to the motor and it activates the motor. So, this is how the sensor the processors along with the D 2 A and A 2 D converters and finally, the actuator makes a complete typical embedded system application. So, when we talk about the embedded system, there are certain application, uh, there are certain characteristics which define a typical embedded system. So, what are those characteristics? So, first of all, it is single functioned. What, what is meant by single function? Like it, uh, it has a dedicated application. So, the embedded system design which has been done for a particular application cannot be used in any other application. So, it is specific to a particular task. This is the, uh, this is how a single function application is defined, tightly constrained. When, whenever we design any embedded system, there is there are certain constraints which have to be kept in mind according to which the rules are set and an embedded application is finalized. So, it it includes the tightly uh, it includes a very uh, strict constraints in designing. Third point is reactive and real time. So, whenever we design any application which is a which is a, an embedded system mainly it should be uh, responsive enough like it should it should respond in real time and it should be reactive suppose we are designing any healthcare devices so the response time in those in that case is very important and we we cannot compromise with it so this is what this point means next point is it must be some processor based or uh, it can be microprocessor and uh, it can be microcontroller also. Next is the memory. Memory is very important part of any application because whatever data is being converted from digital to analog or analog to digital or any physical quantity is being converted into electrical signals all these intermediate and the final data are being stored in some memory. So, memory is very much required in the in, uh, in an, any application in an any embedded system application basically. Connected, connected means all the components being used in the embedded system application are connected to each other. Means the output of any component is acting as the input to another one and vice versa. In this way all these components used in the any embedded system application are connected to each other. Hardware software systems means in any embedded system as I have already defined earlier in the, uh, ap uh, in the technical definition of embedded system that embedded system in any embedded system is a combination of hardware and software. So, the hardware and software goes side by side in any application. So, these are the characteristics of embedded system.
what are the advantages? It is still is uh, easily customizable that is according to the application we can customize the design means what how much memory is should be used, what type of memory should be used, what should be the sensing device, what should be the response time, how much power is uh, power consumption is desired and uh, so the area and how much area is required to make an application. So, all these area power memories and uh, time time constraints all can be customized. Low power consumption because any embedded system application is dedicated for a certain purpose. So, accordingly the, the, the power consumption is very low as compared to the generalized application. Low cost because there is a limited uh, there is a limited usage of any components because all the components used in the embedded system application are according to the need and it is tightly constrained. So, the power consumption the cost factor is very much low in case of any embedded system application. Enhanced performance since this these embedded system applications are dedicated these are not generalized. So, all the components being used are in any application is dedicated to a particular stream. So, in this way the performance is very much enhanced because there is low power consumption, there is low cost, there is area required is very constrained. So, in this way the performance is enhanced. What are the disadvantages? If any technological improvements are required, so there is no room for that high development effort, it requires high development effort because all the factors are to be analyzed. Larger time to market, it takes more much very much time to get the product to the market. So, what are the various examples of embedded systems? So, as I have already talked about a systems examples, yes. So, any uh, various things we see around us these are all the examples of embedded systems. Let us have uh, let us have a look. So, in field of biomedical instrumentation ECG recorder, blood cell recorder, patient monitoring system these are the examples of biomedical instrumentation. Communication systems, pagers, cellular phones, cable TV terminals, fax and transceivers, video games and so on. So, these are all the examples of embedded system in communication field. Another one is peripheral controllers of a computer, keyboard controller, DRAM controller, DMA controller, printer controller, LAN controller, disk drive controller. So, we can see these are all related to the peripheral devices being used with the computer. So, when we talk about the industrial instrumentation, process controller, DC motor controller, robotic systems, CNC machine controllers, closed loop engine controllers, industrial moisture recorder and controllers. So, these all these devices which are used in any industry, these are all the examples of embedded system. Another very good examples are the scientific devices like digital storage systems, CRT displays controllers and spectrum analyzers. So, these are all the examples in scientific field. Moreover, whatever the instruments we use today uh, in the labs in our colleges and schools, these are all the perfect examples of any embedded system applications. So, in this way whatever electronic devices we see around us these are all the perfect examples of embedded system designing. Let us have a look at few of these examples. So, this is the picture of a refrigerator and we, we can see that in today uh, to nowadays we can find very advanced refrigerators available in the market. They are so much advanced that even uh, if the, temp the temperature uh, required for a particular thing to be kept in the refrigerator is not appropriate uh, for that, 
then that refrigerator will inform us that the temperature should be this much and in this way we can decrease or increase the temperature of the machine or it will automatically do it. So, in this way the, the all the things are interconnected using internet services like the alarm display actual temperature require uh, and the required temperature all these things are being controlled by the embedded computer inside the refrigerator. Another important thing is human interaction and another is networked interaction. It may be or may not be possible to have an internet connection within the refrigerator. So, we can see that this is a very advanced refrigerator having a chip embedded into it and that chip is uh, having the microprocessor or the microcontroller at its heart and which is able to manage all the things all the processes going on in the refrigerator. So, in this way all the things are automatically managed. Another example is the example of uh, a car basically that is door system. So, in any of the doors in nowadays, nowadays the very advanced cars are available in the market in which there is a window motor lock control, lock actuator, open door sensor all these features are available window control buttons window stall sensor. So, in this way there is no need to panic if the door is open that is uh, the sensor will automatically judge it. There is no need to panic if the door is closed it will automatically open it in emergency situations. There is an actuator available in the car uh, car door which is connected to the remote key. So, if there is any loss in the connection between the key and the door it means the either the battery is not working properly. So, in this way all the things inside a car door is interconnected are interconnected. So, they uh, the working of the door can be automatically managed using the sensors and the control buttons. So, these two were the perfect examples of embedded systems the one was the refrigerator and the one was the automatic monitoring inside a car door. So, today the in the lecture uh, we, we can summarize that in today's lecture we talked about the basics of embedded system the characteristics advantages disadvantages and we ended up with the various applications that is all for today's lecture thank you so much.